Matakiope. My name is Sean Sherman. Um, we are here today. We're going to be making some healthy indigenous food recipes that you guys will be able to do right at home. You should be able to find most of these ingredients in your local grocery stores, but you could also find some of these out in the wild. We have three recipes that we're going to be going through. We're going to be making a very simple um, tea out of um, all of this, which is just going to be a maple and conifer tea that you can drink hot or iced. We're also going to be making a dish utilizing bison, and we're just going to be letting it slow cook until it's really fall apart, almost like a pot roast. And then we're also going to be um, cooking off one of these. This is a Lakota squash. This will be a really fun one to utilize. Um, and other than that, I think we should probably just get cooking. This next dish, uh, again, is a very simple one that you can do at home. Because all we're doing is just taking a pot of water and we're just going to throw some of this stuff in. Um, so this is some of the blue spruce. It smells like a spruce tree. <laughs> and this pine, and there's still some uh, sap on here. It's a little sticky even. Uh, just like the whole branch, it's fine. Just throw it all in there. And then we're also going to be throwing in white cedar, which is really my favorite. Not only can you use this for a tea, but you can also use this to cook in. So maybe you're poaching something or maybe you're using this liquid to, to cook down uh, some meat in. Basically, that's all we're going to do is just throw this stuff in here, turn it on, put it on the stove, turn it on to a simmer and just let it go for probably like 40 minutes. It's just going to be really simple. So let's uh, check out this tea. I'm just going to take a little bit of, again, pure maple, and then we're just going to dip in and get some tea. A little bit of a stir. If you wanted to, you can always just garnish it with a little tiny piece of cedar. And the same thing, if you wanted to do ice, you could let it obviously cool at room temperature, or you could just uh, pour it right over some ice right there. And that's going to melt that ice really quickly. And again, a little bit of maple. Not much more than a tablespoon. So you don't need a lot of sweetener. It's not like a soda that has 28 grams of sugar or something like that. You just need a little bit just to open it up. Stir this just a little bit. You can see that color, it's just so good, so refreshing. First, we're gonna start with the cedar braised bison dish. And we're basically gonna make this like a pot roast. I'm just gonna put this big chunk of meat, but I'm just gonna put this right in the pot. I'm gonna get a little bit of salt, and sprinkle it directly on the meat. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of sumac also for seasoning. And then basically we're just going to use some of this uh, great vegetable. And if you're doing this at home, it's going to be great because after it's cooking for a while, you're really going to smell all that wonderful aroma coming off of it. If you have access to other kinds of meats, you could use venison, you could use elk, um, you could use moose, you could use all sorts of different kinds of other proteins. And... I'm going to cut up this really wonderful locally grown sweet potato and I'm just making big chunks and really simple because I just want it to slow cook and it's just going to be a wonderful basically one pot dish um, that you'll be able to enjoy for uh, most of your whole family. And this is the turnip. But we do have access to wonderful locally grown turnips and is going to taste really awesome in this dish too. So just throwing this in there. We're going to use some of these sunchokes. And these guys just have such a cool uh, um, shape. You know, I just love keeping them simple and just cutting them up so you can see some of that cool shape when it's just these big chunks. It's just a really fun piece to, to use. But again, we'll just break it down so it's just nice pieces that will look good on the plate. And then I am going to use a little bit of the cedar since this is 
cedar braised bison. This is pure maple that's grown here in Minnesota. Pure maple is really important. You don't want to use the, the, the fake maple because it's got too strong of a flavor and it's not real food. So, and the last piece that we're going to do here is just fill this up so the water just barely comes to the top, just over the meat and just over everything else. And that is pretty much it. And then we're just going to put this right into the oven. Um, I'm going to cook this at 300 degrees for about five hours. All right, I'm just gonna pull this out of the oven. Um, so let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, this, it looks awesome. And it smells really good. I can see the meat is totally falling apart and it's perfect. So let's just plate this up, move the cedar out of the way. And these veggies are completely broken down, which is great. Look at that. And this stuff is literally falling apart right here. You can see that, it's just breaking apart. It's so perfect. I'm gonna take some of the cedar and I'm just gonna chop it up and sprinkle it right over. And voila, one pot meal. Um, if you want a little texture, you could always just throw something like some pepitas or something on it because it'll uh, just give it a little crunch as you're going through. But um, this, this is beautiful right now, so perfect. Alrighty. For this recipe, um, we're going to cut up the squash. Um, and this is a big guy, so it might take me a moment. But first, I just like to trim the edges a little bit first. Um, that way, it gives you a, a flat surface to work with when you're cutting, like so. And I'm just going to cut it right down the middle. You want to be very careful when you're cutting these open because they're extremely large. And you can see like how awesome um, this is and see all these seeds like you can save them to put them in your own uh, gardens at home. So it's just really simple to um, cut that out. And then all we're going to do is just take this squash after it's nice and um, just using a spoon and just scraping it just a little bit. Um, we're just going to cut this into pieces to roast. So I'm going to start by cutting it in half again this way and one more time quartering it and then I'm just going to make nice kind of quarter moons basically out of this whole squash. And they don't need to be too thick but you don't want them to be too thin either. Um, just going to finish this off. Okay. All right. So then all I'm going to do is going to take a sheet pan here and I'm just going to layer them out. It's very simple like. And it's okay if they stack up just a tiny bit, but you want it to be mostly single layered if you can. And we're going to use a little bit of, since we have this uh, sunflower oil here, just going to drizzle a little bit right on top of the squash. And add a little bit of salt, just a tiny bit. And uh, since I'm using stuff from my own indigenous pantry here, I'm going to use some of this fresh sumac that we made ourselves too. And just sprinkle it right on the squash. And all we're going to do is just put this right in the oven. Um, I'm going to bake it at uh, um, 375 and I'm going to bake it for, it's probably going to take about 35 minutes um, and we'll just, uh, we'll keep an eye on it though. So I'll set a timer. We are going to be making a very simple pesto. I'm just going to take, um, let's just say, uh, we'll have these recipes written out, but we'll say it's about a quarter cup of sunflower seed, um, maybe um, about the same for pumpkin seed. I'm going to use a little bit of this hemp seed, which you, um, if you can't, don't have access to hemp seed, you don't really need it. Which is that this is going to add a little bit of extra um, nutrition and really healthy oils to this recipe. 
because it's kind of fun to think about cooking without waste. We have these little scraps from the squash that we just did. And I'm going to throw those right in there too. So I'm just going to give them a rough chop because they're going to get all blended up. We have all this pulp that can go in there too. Um, Cause it's really important to think about like just trying to find a use for everything, you know, because our indigenous uh, communities and our ancestors um, had to be extremely resourceful in life. You know, um, our indigenous ancestors didn't have the privilege to be wasteful and they had thousands of generations to teach them what to do with stuff. So instead of throwing things away that have flavor and nutrition and are fresh, why not use them right away? And if you don't have access to a food processor, um, you could use a blender, um, but food processors are pretty easy to come by. Um, they're not too expensive and I see them all the time at thrift stores even. So, so the only thing I'm wasting here basically is these two little pieces. That's the only part of the squash that's not gonna get used for something. All right, so then um, what I wanna do is puree this up really good first. We wanna break up all those seeds and um, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil um, to this and it's probably gonna be again about a quarter cup but like I said, we'll have these recipes written down for you to refer to. And then I am just going to, and we're just going to make a really nice paste out of this. So think of it like making like almost like a, it's almost like peanut butter, but you're using sunflower seeds mostly and the pumpkin seeds and you're kind of just making a really loose paste. So, okay. And then we are going to add a little bit of salt. We'll taste it for salt in a little bit too. I'm going to again add a little bit of pure maple to this. This will probably be um, maybe four tablespoons. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit more oil because I need it to be just a little bit looser. And then all we're going to do is add some of these fresh greens to this. Um, so I'm just going to rough chop some of this kale. Pop that in there. I've got some of this dandelion. Um, and I'm not too worried about the stems because it's all going to get pureed into a sauce. And we're just going to throw that in there too. Real simple like. And just a little bit more kale. Okay, I'm going to start this again. Then we're just going to give it a little bit of a taste for salt. Just a tiny bit. It's pretty close. And voila. If you look at this, it looks just like a, just a regular pesto, basically. This is such a versatile dish. If you wanted to loosen this up with some more oil and maybe add a little bit more agave to it or maple syrup or something, you could basically just have this wonderful dressing, you know, to dress salads. Um, you can pour it over vegetables. You can use this as a sandwich spread. Um, you can basically do whatever you want to. <laughs> There's no rules for it. So, all right. So, this is nicely roasted and beautiful. Yeah, this is perfect right now. A little bit of pesto on top also. And just gonna garnish with just a tiny bit of oil. A little bit of that sumac that we used on the squash. And a little bit of the pita seeds that I'm just gonna break in my hand and just kind of use this as like a garnish. And something so simple, so nutritious, and it's really, it's just really all you need.